Let's go over some perceptions versus realities when it comes to your money. The first one is that debt is a tool. The perception is it's okay to borrow money and go on the debt. The reality is there is no such thing as a good debt. And we don't really want to be Stanley from the video looking happy but have all this debt and being stressed inside. Another perception is, well, actually it's one of the most hottest topics in personal finance, the credit score. The perception is a high credit score means I am winning financially. The reality is having a good credit score means I like debt. Let's talk about how your credit score is measured. MyFICO.com shows five major components to your credit score. 35% is based on your debt payment history. 30% of your score is based on the amount owed. 15% of your credit score is based on the length of time in debt, 10% based on new debt, and 10% based on the type of debt you have. What is the one word that was mentioned in each one of those five categories? Debt. So again, it's more of a I love debt score. Think about it. If grandpa or grandma leaves you $5 million, it will not change your credit score one point. If you go to work the next day and the boss gives you a million dollar a year raise, it won't change your credit score one point. And I know this might take a little while to sink in, but they have been marketing the credit score to us for a very long time. The credit score is not for you, it's a tool for the lenders to use as they want to sell you more debt. We're not here to purposely harm your credit score, but we want you to be purposely moving away from the reliance on debt. Your credit score will continue to go down and will eventually match that of a typical millionaire. Zero. You can choose to either be Stanley in the video or be like a millionaire and start to build wealth. Another perception are the credit cards. The perception is they're more convenient, build up the airline miles, I can use it as an emergency fund, it's safer, can't do things without them. But the reality is cash works better. The average person spends at least 12 to 18 percent more when you swipe with your credit card than when you use cash. Another perception is overdraft protection, which is it will protect us from overdraft fees. The reality is if you overdraft on your account, you still pay fees. This is from lack of planning. Remember the story from back in the budgeting and planning from emergencies lesson? That couple averaged two overdrafts a month for over 13 years. At $30 each, that would total to $9,360. Wow! This is no reason to be overdrafting, period. I mean, what could you do with $9,000? There's a lot of different things that you can do with $9,000. Think of the term protection when we talk about overdraft protection. That's another positive term. It's another mousetrap we easily fall into because they make us feel good about being protected that we're not going to get any overdraft fees. Well, in one year alone, banks made $29.5 billion, with a B, dollars. Well, we're not being at the banks here. It's not their fault. It's yours. You're the one that needs to change your behavior.